CTW Automation here, and we wanted to share a video and introduce a new feature of Probe that some people have actually been using, and go through it, show you how to how to make it work and what it can do for you. Um, the feature is basically the diagnostic, and we did cover that a while back, but it's changed and uh, has a bit more power. So, in Probe. Once you have a data file open, whether it's in test data or PVP data, uh, basically you can do create diagnostic by right-clicking any, on any speed of that file, it doesn't matter, and doing create diagnostic. It will open up a window here if it wasn't already open. Um, Diagnostic legend also will appear if it wasn't there. And you can see we now have this data file. And we have signal selection and we have uh, a lot of squiggly lines, basically. So what this does is all the signals from the dyno, displacement, velocity, load, temperature, and if you have any additional ones, will show up down here in signal selection. So what it does is it's the signals on a time scale. So here we have velocity turned on and velocity is on the Y, X is time. So basically from start recording to stop recording, you are able to look at everything the dyno did based on its signals. So this is the velocity signal. So this is part of the uh, time-based warm-up. And then we go into uh, the various speeds from uh, this test, which this test was uh, a PVP. And you can see, obviously, the velocities stepping up as we go. Um, you can also look at uh, displacement and force if you want to really get into looking at the signals, exactly what was going on, because obviously on our graphs, we're just showing you one cycle that you've chosen from your data. Let me turn that on so you can see it. As you remember in Test Builder, any speed you select, go and select cycle three. So you're just seeing the one cycle. By using the shock diagnostic, you can look at multiple cycles and basically get some more information. Maybe it's more helpful and let you do some further analysis, basically. So in this case, the reason this came up is because customers wanting to know how many cycles the dyno ran, what was going on, and Using the diagnostic, we get to look a little bit closer at what is really going on. Biggest question, as you go faster and faster, you get towards the, the peak of the machine. You get to the point where the dyno may not be able to go any faster based on horsepower. And we have ways to, to view this. We can do calculations to figure out if it's making enough horsepower, or we can look at what the velocity is doing. So if we start to zoom in, we can see that, uh, you know, this is uh, basically a six inch per second velocity, then it jumps up to somewhere around eight and 9.6. You can see it takes a cycle to get up to speed because it is an AC motor. It takes a little time to accelerate. And as we get towards the peak speed out here, now this is on a one inch stroke, 25 millimeters. It's a single phase dyno. It needs some time to accelerate. And you can see it is actually ramping up because this is the velocity we've chosen to show. So it's ramping up, trying to get to that next speed. And it actually takes some time. And uh, then it finally reaches its speed of 13.5 uh, 13 inches per second. And uh, you can get your data. But there is a ramp time. And that ramp time does count because uh, back to the test builder, do you ever wonder what these are? Cycles to reach, waiting one cycle, run three, choose the third one. It turns out what that means is, zoom back in here. So we waited a cycle, 
So somewhere in here. Then we ran three, one, two, three, and then we're choosing this one. So we may or may not be giving it enough time to get to speed. So maybe your PVP doesn't show up just right. Maybe uh, it doesn't, the, the shock hasn't reached a steady state and your graph may just not show a full cycle because it's still getting up to speed. We can actually look at that. We can look at the velocity and see what's going on, see if it's actually getting up to speed. When you see a situation like this, you would want to increase that time to wait. So here you go, one, two, three. You might want to increase that time to wait to get the speed at your, your fastest speed, basically towards the end of the dino's ability. You're going to want to wait perhaps four. Now when you're going this fast, it happens very fast, very quick. You can see that is, is five cycles within a second. So quite, quite fast. It's not as if you're really waiting. And then trying to get further along so you have a steady state damper and the graph you get is, is better. So things to pay attention to. But that's how you use the diagnostic uh, in the first regard. Now, when we first did this, we, we were on the test data area and we right clicked. But now once you go to diagnostic, there's some other features you can choose. So if you right click here, you can do add a run or add a cycle. So if we first just start with add a run, you can basically choose to select the run of, uh, and this was in metric, which is why these don't quite work, uh, match up to the inches per second. If we choose this run and we turn that off and we double click to zoom, there it is. That was the actual cycle we were looking at for this particular run. Again, getting up to speed, and here's the steady state. So that's the actual data from that particular run that we used, and we probably chose this cycle to put on the graph. Nice steady state cycle. The next thing you can do is that was adding a run. You can actually add just individual uh, cycles. So that was getting up to speed, and we ran three, and we chose the third one. So this is the actual data cycle you can see there, and that's now the red one. That's the actual cycle we'd use to put on the graph. And you can see it's obviously not this one because it had to get up to speed. So if we grab that and we use our offset, we grab that, we can actually go and try to match it up just just to kind of make ourselves feel good but you see that matches uh, so any of these are steady state we're kind of proving it just by moving this around obviously it did not get that cycle did not use that because that was still getting up to speed and we told it to go to the third one so if we come over here that matches up rather perfectly so that shows you uh, which cycle it was being used. Kind of interesting, kind of lets you look very in-depth at what's going on. Introduce you to a new offset feature that's up here, and you can move that around. And then, uh, you know, when you're done, turn that back off, it goes away. Turn off that, it goes away, and you're back to, double-click, back to your original run. So any one of these groups you're able to look at not only from an overall view, you can then look at as we did just the the data that was used. Oh, you got it. Yeah, see, I'm on the offset. I have to go back to zoom. We go back to zoom. That was just that particular cycle. Uh, you know, whatever speed that was and the number of, we, we ran four or five cycles, that is that. And then we have the actual particular single cycle that was used to produce the graph on the screen. So diagnostic, pretty powerful tool, allows you to look at your signals in time, allows you to move them, offset them, and, and do some interesting things to Make sure your damper's doing exactly what it is you want it to do. There you go. Hope you enjoy that feature. If you're wondering, this is in the version that's just been released. 
21 again is 2021. Three is the third month, March. And two is the second day. So this was released March 2nd. This version 949, that's just the iteration on that particular day. So there you go. There is the shock diagnostic. I hope it uh, helps and lets you do some more investigation. Thank you.